What's up guys, it's Church from Overwatch. Um, I'm going to be doing a bit of a review, not really like a shooting review or anything like that, but it's it's one of my favorite pistols uh, now ever since I bought it, and I actually bought mine used, but what I'm going to do a review of is the HK45 by KWA. Um, the, the pistol is just really, really, really nice. Um, I, I haven't had any problems out of it at all. The only thing I really don't like uh, well, actually, there's a few things that I don't like. Uh, first off, the barrel that comes with it is plastic, which, you know, KWA can say whatever the hell they want. They can say, oh, you know, it's self-lubricating, whatever, shut up. No, it's a plastic barrel. You didn't have to save money at the end of the day. I understand that, but at the same time, I don't like to be BSed because it's just, you know, just, just be honest. Um, another thing that bothers me is that the lack of aftermarket barrels to replace it with, a, you know, a metal decent outer barrel. Not to insinuate that the original plastic outer barrel isn't high quality or anything, but let's be real, people like metal. So, that being said, I replaced mine with a uh, USP-40, uh, or no, it's a USP-45 outer barrel. Um, you can see the trademarks right there. And uh, normally, there's a giant white paragraph right there. You can kind of see where I sanded that off. Um, I don't like paragraphs on my guns either, so I'm, I'm sure you understand. But uh, ultimately, I mean, I've, I've put this gun through quite a bit, and it's still, you know, it's 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 a hell of a gun, to say the very least. Um, it's got a metal slide polymer lower. It's uh, it, I read somewhere where somebody said it was basically uh, H&K's model of the 45, which to some degree is true. This does have a double action trigger, whereas a 1911, you know, you have to cock it before you can fire, whereas this thing, you know, double action. So that's that's a really nice feature of it. The magazine, I believe, is 26 and 1, coming out at 360 feet per second, which is really nice. Um, but I believe my outer barrel is a garter, and uh, something that I don't like about the USP series, or at least the uh, the uh, 45 and the 40, is that the the threads on them are 16 millimeter, and the only silencer I've come across that fits the 16 millimeter threads is the VFC uh, Knight's Arm Co. And that's the one I actually have on here. So, as you can see here, you know, it's got the Vieira Beach Trades. You know, it's it's a really nice uh, suppressor. However, it's very, very hard to come by since they've been discontinued. And uh, I just, I don't like those 16mm threads. You know, they, they seem to be kind of just... They're harder to thread, you know, they're harder to put a silencer on than uh, about any other thread I've seen. Um, you know, you got to get it lined up right, and it's just, it's a hassle, to be perfectly honest. I don't, I don't exactly know why they didn't go with 14 millimeter. My guess is due to the outer uh, barrel dimensions and the uh, of the uh, Real Steel 45 versus the Airsoft 45 is not large enough to compensate for the realism um, and the difference in diameter. Um, cause I'm not sure what the diameter of a 45 cal is, but anyhow, the, just, just the 16 millimeter outer, uh, threads suck, plain and simple. There's no way of getting around it. Something I do like about the HK 45 back on the track is, uh, you have a Picatinny rail right here, which is very, very nice. Something if anybody uses HKs, they'll know that this right here is uh, widely known for having to have proprietary lights or laser attachments and all that, and that's something that K or, uh, HK completely did away with with the uh, HK45, is that you can now use your Streamlight M3s, your TLR1s, whatever you know flashlight you really have, you can just mount those right there, which is real nice. Something else I like about this is the HK45 trades trademarks, the 45 Auto, they're uh, serialized, um, on the opposite side, I didn't get rid of the uh, you know licensed trademark of Heckler and Kosh right there, um, and right here is a uh, six millimeter. It's real hard to see it, but you can kind of see the outline on the video. I'm not a big fan of that, nor am I, in all honesty, a big fan of the uh, HK45 safeties, um, or safety, I should say. Right here, you'll notice you have your safety and decocker. This is in the safe position. However, that safety has never really been secure on the HK series, in my opinion. You know, it's not like a 1911 where it's just all the way locked in place. They, they've just always been a little bit finicky. Now, I will say that since these do have the decocker, it is pretty nice. But, you know, I just I don't like how that safety feels. It's not secure enough for me. And, you know, 
of course, the only people that would complain about this are people like me, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, one problem I have in all my usage of this, uh, one problem I have had is right here, right below, you can see the safe. Um, right below the safe is a fire option that used to be outlined in red. However, the plastic black or the plastic red red paint that they used in there fell out, and uh, that that's just kind of sucky. Um, now, something else uh, that goes with the decocker is not to you know point this at my head or anything, but if you pull the trigger all the way back or the uh, the hammer all the way back, put it on safe. You can pull the trigger; it won't fire. If you decock it, put it back on safe. It won't even go back to that second position. Then take it off, put it on fire, and it'll fire. Something else. If you have your gun with the slide forward like so, and you hit the firing pin, you cannot take your magazine, stick it in, and fire. It does require chambering of one shot to fire. So um, it, it is a little bit of respect to the real steel in that instance. Um... It does have the adjustable back straps. I left mine with the uh, the standard one, but it comes with one that's smaller and one that's larger for those who have smaller, or bigger hands. Uh, this feels a lot like a uh, an ATP. So if you if you like the way the ATP feels, then definitely check this out. Apparently, it also has KWA's new version two hop up system, which I've had phenomenal range and accuracy and consistency out of it. And I mean, I've I've taken all kinds of stupid shots with it, and I, I really really like it so far. Um, it does have the uh, dual-sided slide release, so if you're lefty like me, that's really nice. Um, the only thing that isn't really ambidextrous on this is the safety, which does suck. Like I said, I'm a lefty, so every time you know you actually cock the gun, you have to do some weird funky movement or you know put your thumb over to the opposite side to uh, actually uh, hit that decocker. But honestly, it's it's a really great gun. It is one of KWA's newer uh, guns. Which I'm not a big fan of the material they used on the slides. You know, it's it's a nice slide, it's durable, but I just don't like how lightweight it is. You know, and like I said, that's probably just me being you know nitpicky about something else. But uh, apart from that, I mean, the gun's a phenomenal performer. You know, I, I can normally get through about you know two magazines worth of gas before I have to uh, uh, you know refill the gas or reload the ammo. So it's it's a really really nice gun. Um, apparently, it can use USP forty magazines. However, uh, I've ne or USP forty five magazines, but I've I've never seen that. So, but uh, the one problem I have had with the HK forty five is uh, holsters. Um, this right here is a USP forty five holster that I've modified to fit the HK forty five. As you can see, it locks it in place and everything. The requirements, though, since Blackhawk does not yet make a USP 45 Serpa, is that you have to make an L-shaped cut. You can see that right there where I had to take a Dremel to the back end of it and cut away, because if you don't do that, then it will engage the mag release every time. I'll try to give you an up-close shot. See? You have to go and cut away where that mag release is, otherwise it'll pop your magazine out every time you try to load the pistol back into that holster. And uh, if I recall correctly, G Code does make a uh, 45 holster, but I just had this USP 45 holster sitting around and said, hey, we can make a fit. But uh, something else I had to do is uh, sand out the inside of the holster. You can see how the uh, edges and everything are a little bit rounded. Uh, I just sat down with a, uh, a Dremel and you know smoothed that out as much as I could because it pinches especially right here at the top two ridges, uh, right there and right there. And if you can go and sand those edges down, then it really makes it a lot smoother to put the uh, or to holster the HK45 or to deholster it in the event of needing to use it. Um, those I think are my only real complaints. Like I said, the USP or the HK45 is a fairly new gun, so I'm sure Blackhawk will come out with a uh, uh, holster at some point or a Blackhawk Serpa at some point, but they just haven't yet. And I'm impatient. And I didn't really feel like going out and buying a whole new G code or whatever brand it is that makes one. Um, I'll try to put that up later, which brand it actually is that does have the uh, holster available. But, you know, I, I can't remember at the moment. But, uh, honestly, this gun, I mean, I think the longest shot I've taken with it is like maybe 80 feet, 90 feet. So, I mean, for a stock pistol, you know, it does have that aftermarket, or not aftermarket, it does have the, uh, um, the new KWA uh, hop-up system that they're starting to use in all their pistols. 
And uh, I, I think KWA really hit it, uh, hit a home run with that hop up system. I mean, it's just really impressive. I've seen ATP shoot, and they were nothing short of, you know, kind of lackluster uh, performance. And uh, this thing is just rock solid. It's a performer every way you look at it. Um, but definitely check out the uh, the Garter aftermarket USP forty five barrels. Um, like I said, the only problem you're going to have is that spacing right there. You can see it. Um, on each side of the uh, frame, and so that's that's the only real major downside is there's not a designated USP or HK45 metal barrel yet. But I mean, this one has the HK45 auto trademark, so I'm you know I'm not crying too hard. Um, the sights, I, I really like the sights. You know, that's that's not saying a whole lot. You know, in the event that I didn't like them, I could always go get some tritiums or trichicons. Um, I mean, this thing is just rock solid. It's a great performer. It feels good in your hands. Um, it's a, uh, it's just a good gun. It's uh, it seems like it's going to be fairly reliable long term. I think they came out like 180 bucks or 170 dollars. Um, I actually bought mine second hand. The guy bought it. Uh, he put the aftermarket barrel in it and he included the silencer. And I bought it off him, but I don't know that he really ever used it that much because by the time I got it, it was in really just it was still in phenomenal new condition basically. So. Since then, I've beaten the mess out of it, and it's got a few scratches and whatever, but so far, it's 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 looking like it'll last for a while. But anyhow, uh, my name is Church from Overwatch. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments, and uh, thanks for watching.